I mean, I'm hearing some baseball players, you know, they sign for bazillions of dollars. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but very slightly. Others for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then I hear economics are at the center of this. And I just want to shake my head because it, it all seems so moot when you're talking about that kind of money. What is the big issue here? Well, it's about money, Suanna. I hate to say it. It's it's about money and how to take this massive financial pie that is Major League Baseball and divide it in a way that each side uh, thinks is is fair. I think a lot of fans out there over the past month, especially you know, every time you uh, you know you click on a on a sports website or sports page, you see another Major League Baseball player signing a multi million or hundred million dollar contract. I think in the last month alone, leading right up to this lockout, right up even minutes before this lockout, Suhana, there was more than a billion dollars uh, lavished on major league. The issue right now is really who gets that money. Major League Baseball players um, kind of become free agents after a certain amount of service time. It usually comes at around the age of 30. So you have to kind of do a lot and play for a while before you can really cash in. The players would like to see free agency come earlier to see more players be able to go after that big money. They'd also like to see the money spread around uh, to uh, to some of the uh, kind of more middle or bottom end players on the roster. Major League Baseball is saying, listen, for smaller market teams, for them to stay competitive, they need to control those players longer. Control meaning keep them on the team before they can come free agents and go to bigger teams who are willing to spend the money. Because, yes, there's a lot of money being spent, Suhanna, but it's really being spent by about a dozen teams. Um, one pitcher, Max Scherzer, signing a contract that will pay him annually more than many teams in baseball pay their entire roster. And when you listen to uh, Major League Commissioner uh, Rob Manford, when it comes to these financial issues, it sounds like the two sides remain very far apart. The Players Association, as is their right, made an aggressive set of proposals in May, and they have refused to budge from the core of those proposals. Things like a shortened reserve period, a $100 million reduction in revenue sharing, and salary arbitration for the whole two-year class are bad for the sport, bad for the fans, and bad for competitive balance. No, Suhanna, a strike or a lockout is never good for any sport, but baseball in a particularly precarious situation, it's not a growing sport. In many markets in the United States, it's fading well behind football, behind basketball, in some markets even behind hockey. Right now, they have about a month to kind of get their act together before the beginning of February when spring training opens the season set to begin uh, in March. This is a sport that had lots of labor acrimony in the 70s and 80s, of course, the player strike of 1994, but has enjoyed relative uh, labor peace over the last uh, number of decades. A game has grown a lot economically, but in terms of growing its fan base, it struggled. Obviously, a, a cancellation of any games this season would be devastating. Of course, here in Toronto, uh, the only Canadian major league team, lots of excitement around a very young very talented roster, but quickly, Suhana, you know, on the issue of, of free agency, you know, a guy like Vladimir Guerrero, if these service times were altered, you'd see a player like that be eligible, you know, to leave for a bigger market and potentially more money earlier than he's allowed now, where he has to stay with the Blue Jays for a certain number of years before he can then go out and cash in on some mm. of these free agent deals that are out there. And, of course, during this lockout, there are no free agent signings, no use of facilities, no contact whatsoever between players and the team. So all of that comes to a halt. But what's the timeline on this? You mentioned spring training. Uh, you know, they could lose a little bit of money there. But 162 games of a full season, if they start to have to chop that, what does it mean? Well, it means a loss of revenue, uh, of course. Right now, teams, you know, aren't in the position to, to sell tickets. Um, as you mentioned, the free agent, the signing period has stopped. I mean, the baseball winter meetings traditionally take place, uh, you know, in you know, in early January. Uh, it's unclear on how those are going to play out. But I think the clock really starts um, ticking in earnest uh, at the beginning of February. That's when you'd see players start to report to spring training pitchers and catchers, followed by the rest of the roster a few weeks later. And the first game of the season is set to start um, March 31st. I think baseball and, and, and its players association, they, they really have to take a long, you know, hard look at what they're doing here and realize that 
you know, if they start canceling games, uh, and further alienating fans could be very bad for mm-hmm. a sport that already is uh, is leaking, uh, you know, a fan base that was once quite robust, especially in many markets in the United States. Exactly. And then, you know what, the players, they have no salary cap. If they start raising uh, ticket prices to cover off some of these deals, what do you think fans are going to say then? Well, I, I think the whole premise of, of of this lockout is very hard for average people, you know, to digest and to rationalize. I mean, they look at the money being lavished around, and you know, when you start getting into whether someone should be paid, you know, four million dollars or, or or nine million dollars, it's hard for many fans to sympathize. And I think if then you turn around and say, well, you know, we lost X number of games, we're going to have to make up, you know, the revenue. Other ways, you know, higher concession, higher ticket prices, you further alienate fans. I, I think the optics of this are, are not good, um, given the headlines that people are seeing when it comes to, like I said, the more than billion dollars of, of free agent dollars that have been lavished on the players. You know, it's hard for the players to cry poor when you look at the, when you look at that, when you look at the average salary in baseball. And it's hard for the owners to, to say that, you know, they're struggling when they're giving out many franchises are giving out these massive free agent deals. So I think the sport's in a very, uh, you know, precarious spot and uh, the clock is ticking. But I think the, the next month you'll really see some, uh, some urgency from both sides because I think they both realize what's at stake here. A little bit of tough love. We might see that happening. Jamie, we'll talk again. That's Jamie Strashen from CBC Sports.